Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Jesus so sweet, O oh, Jesus so mild, for sinners you became a child. You came from heaven down to earth in human flesh through you. Birth, O oh, Jesus, so sweet, O oh, Jesus, so mild, O oh, Jesus, so sweet, O oh, Jesus, so mild, with God we now are reconciled. You have for all the ransom paid, your Father's righteous anger stayed. O oh, Jesus, so sweet, O oh, Jesus, so mild. O oh, Jesus, so sweet, O oh, Jesus, so mild, Joy fills the world which sin defiled. Whatever we have belongs to you, O oh, keep us faithful strong and true, O oh, Jesus, so sweet, O oh, Jesus, so mild. Psalm 148. Alleluia! Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, shining stars. Praise him, highest heavens and the waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord he commanded. They were made. He fixed them forever, gave a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, sea creatures and all oceans, fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy winds that obey his word. All mountains and hills, all fruit trees and cedars, beasts wild and tame, reptiles and birds on the wing, all earth's kings and peoples, earth's princes and rulers, young men and maidens, the old men together with children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he alone is exalted. The splendor of his name reaches beyond heaven and earth. He exalts the strength of his people. He is the praise of all his saints, of the sons of Israel, of the people to whom he comes close. 
God Most High. By your word you created a wondrous universe, and through your spirit you breathed into it the breath of life. Accept creation's hymn of praise from our lips, and let the praise that is sung in heaven resound in the heart of every creature on earth to the glory of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from Hebrews, the second chapter. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. Since, therefore, the children share the flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. Here ends the reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I suspect there are many of you who will know what I'm talking about when I reference Dick Cress, long-time member of our parish, regular elder, serving to help distribute the sacrament and read the scriptures anytime someone else didn't show up. He was a faithful servant of the Lord. But what I remember about Dick most was his reoccurring question about the Lord's Prayer. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. His question was one that, if we think about the words of the Our Father at all, I hope makes us pause and gives us a question. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. How is it possible that a good God could lead us into temptation? How is it possible that he would not deliver us from evil? The author of Hebrews helps us ponder this mystery, and it all goes back to the mystery of the Word made flesh. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. What he is talking about in language that can perhaps seem a bit opaque and obscure to us is that the second person of the Trinity, the one 
for whom all of creation was brought into being, the one through whom everything exists. He is the one who is not only the Word made flesh, but the Word that spoke in the beginning of creation, let there be, and for whom all of creation can only respond, it is good. It is the Son of the Father, who is the one who God sent to be the pioneer, the trailblazer for our salvation. We think of the early days of our nation's history and some of the rather simplified stories we heard as a child. Elbow room, cried Daniel Boone, and he left the crowded um, community in which he was, with neighbors several miles away, to go out into a new area. He was a trailblazer. He led the way into a wilderness unknown, unexplored, in order to lead others behind them. That is who our Lord Jesus Christ is. The one who was the word that spoke all of creation into being in the beginning is the one who is the pioneer of our salvation. Jesus led the way. He led the way as we will hear on this coming Sunday, at his baptism and stepped forth from those waters anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. He led the way through the times of temptation and testing in the desert, as we will hear on the first Sunday of Lent. He led the way through proclaiming the coming of the kingdom of God in parables and sermons. He's the one who led the way by bringing hope and healing to many through his power. He is the one who led the way through the cross and suffering into life everlasting. He is the author and the pioneer of our salvation because he is the one who led the way. And we who follow in his footsteps can only hope to follow in such a path, for he is the pioneer of salvation made perfect through suffering. It is sometimes tempting to think of our Christian faith as an opportunity to cling to a promise that will help us escape the adversities of this world. Name it and claim it, seizing on to the promises of God, hoping that they may somehow negate the crosses that are before us. But the fact of the matter is this that as Jesus was made perfect, reached his goal and destination through the reality of suffering, so will we. We say it all the time. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And implied in that confession of faith in the liturgy is the fact that we have died. We have been put to death. The old Adam within us, with all of its sin and pride and greed, left that behind in the waters of baptism to be risen with Christ to a new kind of life, a life of forgiveness and salvation, a life of sanctification and holiness. 
And just as Jesus will come again, we journey with him towards that end and destiny. It is fitting that he, through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should be made the pioneer of their salvation, perfect through sufferings. Jesus is bringing us to glory. That's the essence of the message of this Christmas season as it comes to a close at this very special time of year. The fact is, Jesus would say to his Father in prayer, Our Father. And we say with him as well, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. For the one who sacrifices and therefore makes us holy is the one who sanctified us. And we have but one Father in Jesus Christ. Jesus is not ashamed to call us his brothers and sisters, we are reminded in today's reading, precisely because as Christ has died and is risen, we too die with him in baptism that we might rise with him to a new and everlasting life. Therefore, since the children share flesh and blood, Jesus himself likewise shared the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who had the power of death. In the story of Christmas, we remember the coming of our Lord in human flesh and blood to share with us the reality of our very concrete being and then, yes, to share with us the reality of our suffering and death. And why? So that we might rise to him and be sanctified, be made holy with him, through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. He himself was tested, we hear the author of Hebrews say, and he was. He was tested by Satan as he was tempted to sin in the desert. He was tested every time the scribes and the Pharisees would approach him and challenge him, forcing him to own whether he is, in fact, the Son of God. He was tested on that first Holy Thursday when he took bread and gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body. It's given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We, like Jesus, follow him on a path of testing. And the last petitions of the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, do not excerpt us from the reality of struggle and strife in this world. And yet this we know, that he is able to help those who are being tested. Sisters and brothers in Christ, for all the challenges that life may lay before us, we know this, that Jesus is not only able, but willing and present to be there to help us in all of life's ups and downs. And so we can say with David in the psalm of old, the praises of our Lord, let them praise the name of the Lord. He alone is exalted. The splendor of his name reaches beyond heaven and earth. As these last days of Christmas draw to a close, may the splendor of the Lord never end. May we come to his praise and glory forever, singing with David, and with the saints of every time and praise, the praise of the Lord, that he 
is the strength of his people. He's the praise of his saints, of the children of Israel, the people to whom he has come close, to the one who comes close to us in word and sacrament, the one who came to us in the incarnation, the one who will come to us again when he comes to judge the living and the dead, be glory and honor now and forever with his Father and the Spirit. Amen. Let us now pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you have poured out your Spirit to call and gather us by the gospel. May your church throughout this world so grow in faith and in hope and in love that together as one we may proclaim the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray for the leaders of every nation. Heavenly Father, you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. Pour out your Spirit upon all those whom you have led to positions of responsibility and authority in the communities that they serve. May they foster within those communities a justice that conforms to your good and gracious will, a mercy that is reflection of that which we have received through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son to be the great physician of soul and body. We lift up before you today all those who we know and love who deal with any illness or injury, whether of body or of mind or of spirit or of heart, that through you, new life may be experienced in this age to the praise of your glory, and we may be led into the kingdom to come. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Look with kindness and compassion upon all who labor in the dark hours of the night. We pray for our police officers, our firefighters, our emergency medical technicians, all whose labor is difficult and dangerous. We pray that you would protect them as they serve for the good of their neighbors and enable them to bring hope and healing to your people. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend these, and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you've caused all of Holy Scripture to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them that, 
by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.